my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea God can cover the entire universe. 
Some people require that proof because that's how God wired them. So we're going to check out some of the aspects of God today. So what I want you to do is think about a few things. Start thinking, what does God look like? How does he feel? Have you ever thought about that? How does God feel? Like if you were to touch him, what would that be like? Where does he exist? Is he existing in our world? Is it outside space? Is it a different timeline? What's happening there? And is God gendered? All right, so let's watch our video. Is God male? The Bible often refers to God as Father, and it usually uses the pronouns he, his, and him when referring to God. But you may have noticed that some Christians do everything they can to avoid using words like he, his, and him, or any pronouns really when referring to God. So instead of saying this, Do not forsake him, for he has given his promise that he will bless us with his love and his wisdom. They say something like this, do not forsake God, for God has given God's promise that God will bless us with God's love and God's wisdom. Why would so many Christians work so hard not to say he, his, or him in reference to God when the Bible does it all the time? I guess the question really is, is God a male? Okay, I know, big question. So fasten your seatbelts. Are you ready? Yes, God is male. Uh, is that... are you... really? No, I'm just kidding. Just wanted to freak you out a little bit. You okay? Okay, consider these three things. First, the Bible was written in cultures that were dominated by a male point of view. So this was the mindset of people at the various times the books of the Bible were written. Second, the Bible says that when God created humanity, it was created in God's image, and not male and female, everybody. We all reflect aspects of God's personality and character. Like the Bible says in Genesis in the creation story, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Of course, we are not God. We're made in the image of God. That's an important distinction. The same way a photograph of you isn't you. Not even close. A picture of you can't ride a bike. It can't make a killer omelet like you can. And a picture of you is terrible at tennis. Boom! In your face! But when we look at that picture of you, we recognize you. This is a pretty good metaphor, really. Oh, boy! We're made in God's image. We have some of God's character traits. We create, we nurture, we sacrifice, we love, just like our Father but not just Father. Which brings us to thing number three. The Bible gives lots of images for God other than just fatherly ones. There are motherly ones too, seriously. For instance, Isaiah 66, 13 says, As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. <coughs> and Matthew 23, 37 says, O oh, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. So our word father can be a great image of a loving God. Hey, like, I kind of like that guy. Sure, but it's also completely inadequate. It can't possibly define or contain all of who God is, and it can't possibly reveal all of God's attributes. Yeah, that's cool. I really like my mom, too. That's great, but neither does the word mother. Aww. Neither does friend, or husband, or hen, or wind. There are lots of great images for God, but in truth, none of them gets the job done completely. <coughs> including the old man with the white beard sitting on a cloud. So are we stuck in our finite little world with our tiny little brains and our limited understanding? Trying to grasp an infinite, ever-present, all-powerful, all-knowing, purely loving God? Maybe, but there's one thing the Bible is absolutely clear about. God loves human beings and wants more than anything to have a relationship with us. Everything from Genesis to Revelation points to this irreplaceable truth. 
And there's one image of God that is spot on and reliable, one that you can always keep in your mind's eye when you pray, and that is the Word of God, God made flesh. In the video today, there were two verses that were brought up that I want to look back at again. So if you have your Bibles, grab them and you can read them. They are Isaiah 66, 13 and Matthew 23, 37. Both those verses look at how there's female attributes to God or like characteristics that are considered female or feminine. The Bible uses traditional feminine characteristics to describe God even though the Bible clearly describes him as a male, calling him the father, he, man, you know, God is a male. It's culture and humanity that limits our ability to fully understand God. Think about it. It's the culture of the time when the Bible was written that limits their capacity to understand God is more than male. At that time, they wouldn't be able to understand God as female. That'd be too far, let alone to understand God as genderless because that's just way too far. Everything has a gender, so why wouldn't God? And it's also our human, abil human inability to understand things without organization. We need to put things in boxes. We need to label things. Whether it has a label that's vague or a specific label, we need to have a label for it. For example, when we don't know what something's called, we call it like a gadget or who's it or what's it, that thing. It has a label. We don't just give it a blank space. It has a name, even though we don't know its actual purpose or name. So while we worship, I want you to make a list of characteristics of God. What do you think God is like? And then once you've made your list, think about are those male, female, or neutral characteristics? What kind of characteristics did you come up with? And are they gendered specific? Mercy is a song singing to my heart, telling me it's okay, come just as you are. I ain't never heard a melody like the one that's singing over me, and I just want to sing along. Mercy is a song, freedom is a choir, swaying back and forth. Shining in the shadow of a stained glass Sunday morning Shouting hallelujah, yesterday is gone Our freedom is acquired, and mercy is a song A singing by a thief saying after what you've done you don't deserve to be free but I can look him in the eye say this time you're wrong cause guilty is a lie mercy is a song for singing oh in the sky One day we'll be singing with those angels up on high and That old familiar melody Like we've known it all along Our heaven is a mansion And 
mercy is a song. Where heaven is a mansion, and mercy is a song. Oh, tell me, can you hear it? Singing, oh, oh, there is a lot for every soul. Oh, no matter where you've been, just come on. Oh, oh, let all God's children sing along. Hallelujah, chains are gone. All God's children sing along. Hallelujah, chains are gone. Mercy is a soul. Mercy is a soul. Mercy is a soul. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. His love for me Who the sun sets free Who is free and deep I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last, he has ransomed me His grace runs deep Awesome great worship. Let's close in prayer and then we'll head into small groups. Dear God, thank you for knowing us and loving us no matter what. God, I thank you that your gender isn't dependent on our faith. And I thank you that you know us because you are beyond us. We are made in your image and you know us so, so well. I pray you be with us and uh, just lift our spirits a little bit. Some people are struggling. I'm one of those people, and I pray you just help us to find peace and grace in you in this time of craziness. Amen. All right, so we're headed to Zoom small groups. So uh, if you need the link, text me. I'll send it to you. If not, I'll see you there. 
It's, and small groups are for grades 6 to 12. I'm going to throw up the leaderboard and you can check out who's winning, which team. And we'll be back Wednesday at 7.30 for more games, fun, and there's prizes. See you later.